evening and welcome to Stories from the Shed, Danny the Champion of the World, Chapter 8, Chapter 8C. We're going to call this Chapter 8C tonight because uh, we didn't quite finish Chapter 8 and that's what we're going to do tonight. We've got a short bit of the chapter to do. Let's say hello first of all to Rebel. There he is and uh, Mr Shoutout and Pesco of course. Right, and so when we last read the story, Danny was driving the baby Austin, his dad was with him, it was about three o'clock in the morning, and Danny's driving home, trying to get him trying to get him home. Let's set the clock off. <clears throat> now that we're on the main road, I changed into second gear. Rev her up and go into third, he said. Do you want me to help you? I think I can do it, I said. I changed into third gear. With my father's hand on the wheel, I had no fear of hitting the hedge or anything else, so I pressed down hard on the accelerator. The speedometer needle went up to 40. Something big with headlamps blazing came rushing towards us. I'll take the wheel, my father said. Let it go of it completely. He kept the little car close into the side of the road as a huge milk lorry went past. That was the only thing we met on the way home. As we approached the filling station, my father said, I'll have to go to hospital for this. It must be set properly and then put into plaster. He's talking about his ankle. How long will you be in hospital? Don't worry, I'll be home before evening. Will you be able to walk? Yes, they fix a metal thing into the plaster. It sticks out underneath the foot. I'll be able to walk on that. Well, should we go to the hospital now? I think Danny wants to drive him all the way to the hospital. <laughs> no, he said. I'll just lie down on the floor of the workshop and wait till it's time to call Doc Spencer. <gasps> Doc Spencer? I wonder if he's a relation of me. I'll arrange... He'll arrange everything. Call him now, I said. No, I don't like waking doctors up at 4.30 in the morning. We'll call him at 7.00. What would you tell him, Dad? I mean, about how it happened. Because remember that Danny's dad is actually doing something that's illegal. He's poaching pheasants on somebody else's land. I'll tell him the truth, my father said. Doc Spencer is my friend. Ah, uh, well, Doc Spencer must be all right if he's a friend of Danny's dad, I think. We pulled into the filling station. I parked the car right up against the workshop doors. I helped my father to get out. Then I held him round the waist as he hop-hopped the short distance into the workshop. Inside the workshop, he leaned against the tool bench for support and told me what to do next. First, I spread some sheets of newspaper out over the oily floor. Then I ran to the caravan and fetched two blankets and a pillow. I laid one blanket on the floor over the newspaper. I helped my father to lie down on the blanket. Then I put the pillow under his head and covered him up with the second blanket. So his dad is basically lying down. His dad's lying down on the floor of the workshop. There we are. So we're in the workshop now. <clears throat> put the phone down here so I can reach it, he said. I did as he asked. Can I get you anything, Dad? Uh, <clears throat> what about a hot drink? No, thank you, he said. I mustn't have a thing. I'm going to have an anaesthetic soon. But you mustn't eat or drink anything. Or all before that. But you have something, Danny. Go and make yourself some breakfast or sausage and egg, then go to bed. But I'd like to wait here till the doctor comes, I said. You must be dead tired, Danny. I'm all right, I said. I found an old wooden chair and pulled it up near him and sat down. He closed his eyes and seemed to be dozing off. My own eyes kept closing too. I couldn't keep them open. I'm sorry about the mess I made of it all, I heard him saying. I must have gone to sleep after that, because the next thing I heard was Doc Spencer's voice saying to my father, Well, goodness me, William, what on earth have you been up to? I opened my eyes and saw the doctor bending down over my father who was still lying on the floor of the workshop. And tomorrow, we're going to get to meet Doc Spencer.
and find out all about him because he's a part of the story too. So tomorrow, chapter 9, Doc Spencer. See you tomorrow. <laughs>